Hello, Hello Facebook. Hello. We are live. All right. We're fired up. Ready, guys? Five, yes, four, three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Freemasons Podcast. I am your host, right? Worshipful Brother George Mudry, and with me tonight, Worshipful Brother Joe. Worshipful Brother Ken. And with us tonight, the right eminent Grand Commander of the Grand Command of the State of Connecticut, Michael Seaman. How are you, right, eminent Grand Commander? I am fine. My boss. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's got a boss. Uh, and uh, so before we get into everything, let's do some uh, quick uh, quick stuff. Uh, FreemasonsPodcast.com, uh, Facebook page, as well as the community page, Patreon. Sign up. You can join uh, Patreon. And we're on Discord, and you can talk to all of us on that. Uh, let's see here. We have some shout-outs. Uh, for people who've liked the podcast, Alex Gonzalez and Ak- Aquarandu Akobundu. I think I did pretty good. Or we'll present it as fact. Or we'll present it as fact. <laughs> Brethren, right hand to arms. To arms. Ready. 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 Aim. 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 Fire. Good fire. Fire off. Together, brothers. Viva, viva, viva. All right, one more. We had a recommendation on Apple iTunes. Having trouble with your mic there, huh, Joe? Yeah, just don't live on me. <laughs> don't start. Oh, oh, come on, guys. Don't grow up. This is middle school. I, mean, I could say so many things, but uh, right. I'm a gentleman. All right. So uh, <laughs> Apple, Apple iTunes, we had a recommendation from Modern... Modern Southern Rebel and Modern Day Southern Rebel. Five-star review. Great podcast. These guys are knowledgeable and a lot of fun to listen to. 10 out of 10. We'll listen again. So, you, brother. to Modern Day Southern Rebel. Joe, lead it. Right hand to arms. 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 Ready. 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 Aim. 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 Fire, good fire, fire all. Together, brothers. Vivat, vivat, vivat. All right. One other order of business, and then we'll move on. Every single time we record a podcast, we actually read out of George Washington's Rules for Freemasons and Life and in Lodge. And it's a lesson uh, from the Rules of Civility of Decent Behavior and Company and Conversation. I got it. I, I think, think you actually they, got they that. They handed out that little booklet at Grand Lodge, mm-hmm. uh, the Rules of Civility. I grabbed a bunch of those. And actually, I had it on my desk at work, and someone stole it. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't very similar. Yeah, no, 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 it was good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we read one uh, pertaining to Freemasons and in Lodge every single week, and we're basically we apply them to our every day. So let's get into the next one. And the next one is going to be number 49. Use no reproachful language against anyone, neither curse nor revile. That is to say, do not yell, swear, or curse at anyone, and do not accuse them of crude and immoral act. That's pretty you lose. That's pretty good. Is that this week? <laughs> <laughs> you've already lost. We haven't even started it's it yet, uh, and you've already lost. Is that last week's? Or that's this week's. week's. That's yep. this week's. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, now appropriate. On. Last week's was every action done with company ought to be done with some sign of respect to those that are present. Yeah. I may have sworn at somebody who cut me off. Oh, uh, that's road rage. That's okay. Way back from Cabela's. That's road rage. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Not when you have a, a Masonic medallion yeah. in the back of your uh, car. That, yeah, that, yeah, is true. that is true. That is Granted, true. I didn't do it. I mean, I did it audibly <laughs> in my vehicle, but he didn't hear me. Oh, okay. So, I tried so to it doesn't count. <laughs> so don't swear at anybody. Don't yell at anybody. Uh, except the Patriots play at eight o'clock, eight fifteen. Let's yes, not. I hope I'm not swearing that. Probably gonna be swearing. I hear it. I hear it sliding. I can hear it popping through the thing. I may go after some Jets fans later. Actually, I already did. I can hold it, like right here for you. Clamp it to the t- other table. We'll probably clamp onto that better. Oh yeah, the, wood, the wooden one. The right this one here. Yeah. Is that thick enough? Might not be thick enough. It's probably just making it worse. Really, it. really can. I'm a child, Joe. You're gonna break it. I'm gonna break the table. Yeah. All right. All so right. Join Patreon so that we can get decent mounts for our microphones. It's day. actually the table, believe you it or not. What we're yeah, the, t- the, the table is flexing. plastic, so it just flexes and crushes. It's a pretty though. nice looking table. Devon, get the table. We need some wooden ones. We need some wooden ones. <laughs> see the, uh... 
All right, I'm not going to touch it anymore. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's just a table because mine's doing the same thing. But uh, you guys actually got the better ones. You got the table mount. Yeah, I'm fine. Floor over here. mount. Floor mount over here. I thought the arms would be better because this way I don't have to worry about because you know what mine keeps doing? It just. We should go shopping. I mean, Christmas is coming. Does it have like an auto height correct? Is that why it keeps going down? I told you. I told you. He's going to take shots at my height. That's right. (laughs) All right. So let's get into uh, right eminent grand commander Michael Seaman. How are you? I'm fine. And uh, how was your summer? Good. I I just got back uh, last night from uh, Albany from the Mm -hmm. Northeast Department Conference uh, with the Grand Encampment. Mm -hmm. It was it was a good weekend. It's always fun to to join those guys, and mm-hmm. I've been doing it for I don't know how many years, ten years more, and uh, it's always good to see everybody. It's a it's it, it's great, you know. It's a, it's a great thing to meet people from other states, other parts of the country. We had guys there from mm-hmm. Texas and North Dakota, so it's always good. I love the main Templar uniforms. Yeah, I love them. the long coats. Oh, I, love it. Never seen I understand that. I was talking to a guy yesterday. They're they're Pricey, yes. Those very. guys are spending a lot of money on those coats. And we have a we have a ton of them up in the New Haven Commandery. Really? Ton of them. Yeah, but the they don't find anybody. Mm-mm. No, <laughs> no. People were built much different oh, back yeah. in the in the early 1900s because they would no way they would. There was no McDonald's or yeah. Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> uh, high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. Not only that, but go, uh, Joe's going to. And a they sh- worked. Yeah, they worked. And Joe's also going to take a short joke at me, too, but they were all like four foot seven, too. Yeah, you're, you would have them. been a giant. Back then. <laughs> Man among men. He's the boss, though. I got to take it from you him. You should. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's fitting right in. This is great. All right. So uh, let's start with your Masonic career. What got you interested and uh, what got you interested in Freemasonry? Why? How did you join? Well, years ago, I worked at a housing authority, and I worked in an elderly complex. And there was an old timer there. And none of the people that lived there, the residents, liked him because they thought he was a snobbish, stuck-up old man and didn't have anything to do with him, Mm -hmm. which in some respect was true because he didn't have anything to do with them because he thought they were all scum. Mm -hmm. And he would tell them that to their face. And he told me that. So... I, I would go over there, and I I did snow removal and stuff, and he'd see me out there with a snow blower, and I'd be out there eight hours, and he'd come out, and he said, hey, Mike, come in here and have a cup of coffee. So I'd go in. I, he'd invite me into his apartment. And he had this beautiful oriental rug about the size of his room, and I, I'd go to take my boots off, and he'd say, don't take your boots off. He goes, that's just an old thing. He says, come over here and sit down. He'd sit down and give me a cup of coffee. We started talking. So he mentioned masonry to me. Mm-hmm. Come to find out, he was the secretary of Hartford Lodge, number 88. Mm-hmm. So uh, finally he got me a petition, and I signed it. And uh, that's how I started. And uh, years later, he died. And, uh, well, before that, I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit. He, uh, I noticed one day he was driving a new car. He had a brand-new Thunderbird. And... Uh, so one day he invited me in his apartment, and he brought. I went in and sat down and had a cup of coffee with him, and I said, something's different here. What's going on here? And uh, I says, your rug. Your rug's gone. He says, what? I said, what happened to the rug? He goes, how do you think I bought the car? <laughs> <laughs> that old rug that I was, wa- I was tra- tra- traipsing across with my boots <laughs> was valuable. And he, come to find out, worked for the Ford Motor Company, and he was uh, in Japan for years working for Ford, and he bought that rug in Japan. He had a wall hanging in there that after he died, somebody stole it. So who knows what that was worth. But uh, he, Alex Manhan, he was a great brother, a good friend. It uh, was kind of sad when he died because we didn't get to give him a Masonic service here. He started to fail. His, his niece came up and took him to Long Island, and they had a service in Long Island we didn't even know about. And we never really did anything with that, and so that was kind of sad. But uh, I'll never forget him. You know, you never forget the guy that brings you into the fraternity. Was he one that uh, raised you, or uh, no? Actually, I was raised by a, uh, who raised me. He was the secretary. Mm-hmm. Reggie Abbott was the master of Hartford '88 back in 1990 when I was raised. 
And Reggie Abbott was also a past commander of Washington Commandery. Mm -hmm. So he was uh, master of that lodge for three years. And uh, he raised me, and at that time we were meeting in Newington. And then we moved to Wethersfield. And we were kind of a vagabond lodge for a while. Then we moved to East Hartford. I was master my third time in West, uh, second or third time in East Hartford. Then the lodge voted to move to South Windsor and they merged with the lodge up there. And that's where they are now. And they're known as Hartford Evergreen 88. Uh, but I was master three times. Now, Reggie Abbott, when he was the commander of Washington Commandery, I wasn't in commandery. He used to invite me to dinners. He says, we're having a dinner in East Hartford. Why don't you come down? Bring your wife. You know, come on down. And uh, I, <laughs> I, already see, I already see the guys fishing pole. Uh, uh, I'm already down there. <laughs> I'm eating dinners with these guys, right? And I didn't join the commandery. Reggie was, I think Reggie was dead before I joined that commandery. Uh, you know, he, I don't think he ever saw me become a Knight Templar. Uh, but uh, I remember his, his funeral, and that was kind of sad. He, he didn't look good, uh, you know. You know, you go to a funeral and people say he looks good. Mm -hmm. He didn't look good. Mm -hmm. you know, he didn't look like the guy I knew. Right. So uh, those are the things you remember. Right. Uh, so but, uh, I've also, I, I've done a lot. I, I was a district deputy. Mm -hmm. I was uh, Blue Lodge Council president. I uh, was president of the Past District Deputies Association. Uh I, I've done all the things in York, right? I was high priest and TIM and commander. And, and uh, just for those who don't know, the high priest is for chapter. Right. And I'm losing mine now. Joe, you're, you're okay. sabotaging me. So yeah, all the high, heat that I'm throwing off. Is, uh, the chapter of Royal Arch Masons. Uh, it's like the master. It's, it's the head of the body. And the TIM is the thrice illustrious master of the council, council of Royal and Select Masters. Uh, I've held both of those chairs twice. Uh, the last time I did those two chairs was last year, which was not really not good. I, I didn't do anyone any favors last year. I just w couldn't give it the energy or the time it deserved. And uh, I'm sorry to say that, but uh, you know that's part of our uh, problem. You know we burn guys out, and and uh, we really have nobody to blame but ourselves. So that's why we need to rejuvenate our, fr our fraternity. And that's part of our big thing this year in York Wright is to uh, improve our membership. So, and Grand Lodge needs to do it too, and they know it. And uh, so that's something we're trying to do. We're trying to improve our membership. And uh, this is something that's great, this podcast. Uh, when I got, to, George called me and gave me the opportunity to be here, I, I, I would not turn it down. Thank you, and I'm, I'm super glad you're up here. Yes, because uh, we're, I'm trying to get as many heads of bodies up here and experienced Masons that can talk and to the people who are either joining Freemasonry or already in Freemasonry and have no idea. Yeah. Well, you know, when I joined Masonry, uh, I tried to get my son in. He 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 went a different route. Uh, I have a, his his son. My grandson's autistic, which oh. takes up so all his time. Right. It's between work and my grandson. So, um, that's a tough deal for him. And the mom has nothing to do with him. So mm. she's out of the picture. So it's all on my son. So, right. uh, I give him all the credit in the world for taking care of him and being the dad that he is. Mm. And, and that's, that's good. Mm. So, uh, but, uh, I always thought that I was the first Mason in my family and maybe the last Mason. Mm. And, Last year or the year before, I was in uh, Pennsylvania, Grantville, Pennsylvania, at the Grand Commandery session. Mm. And uh, prior to that, I was at a, a, a birthday party for one of my aunts. And uh, my aunt, I mentioned masonry. I talked about masonry while I was there. And when, when I got up to leave, one of my aunts turned to me. And she said in passing, hey, you know, one of your great, great grandfathers was a past grand master of Masons in Pennsylvania. Wow. wow. So, so I'm know. like, and it never really sunk in. And then one night I was sitting home 
and I, my grandson was in the other room. He comes over and visits, and he was, he 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 takes over the bedroom. And he's on the on the computer and listens to music, and he pushes me out, and I, I he makes me sit in my chair. <laughs> he, he actually pushes me and makes me sit. He says chair, pushes me in the chair, and he's big enough to do it. Right. So uh, I I'm sitting in my chair, and I take out my phone and I Google Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. And then I find the link for the past Grand Masters. And I'm going back through the years. And I believe it was 1934 or thereabouts. Lo and behold, there was a past Grand Master of Pennsylvania by the name of Snyder, which was my mother's maiden name. Oh, wow. So it's very possible I may have a great great grandfather who was the. Grand Master of Pennsylvania. Wow. And That's cool. if you guys haven't traveled to Pennsylvania. Oh, I've been to that building several times. But Pennsylvania yeah, is a huge state, and they've got a lot of Masons mm -hmm. in the state of Pennsylvania. I think it's one of the biggest uh, Grand Lodges in the world, mm -hmm. uh, besides England. I think I heard that this weekend from someone from Pennsylvania. And the Grand Commandery is huge, too. Uh, like in our state, we have eight commanderies, barely. Yeah. And uh, we don't have any districts. They have districts for commandery in Pennsylvania. Right. Like we have district deputies. Yep. They have them for commandery. <sighs> so there's guys out there that have eight and ten commanderies in their district, and they have like eight, eight, eight or ten districts. Hmm. So wow. it's just a huge state. So uh, I talked to a guy at the banquet there in Grantville, at the Grand Commandery session, and he worked for the Grand Lodge. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to these banquets and you sit at these tables, and you don't know who, you, who you're sitting with or who mm -hmm. you're sitting across mm -hmm. from. Right. So uh, he worked for the Grand Lodge, and he was going to research this for me. And I was supposed to call him. He gave me his card. I lost his card. But uh, <laughs> it, it will happen. I will find out. Uh, even if I have to go to uh, one of those 23andMe or whatever websites, right. Ancestry.com. Sure Ancestry Ancestry Don't sure. do that. Don't, Don't do, do that. that. Don't, Don't do that. that. Don't do that. Because if you think you're Italian, you're not. <laughs> well, uh, George can tell you all about that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you're Croatian or, or, or Dominican. Yeah, like, but what? That, How'd that even happen? But that could be the truth. Uh, you know, we have to accept the truth, you know? That's why you go to that. I you think out. you know, but do you really? I'm English and uh, Western European. Oh. And Lilliputian. Look it up. I, yeah. I, I really want to I, I really yeah. do it because... There's something that uh, I found out my aunt, uh, I just uh, rekindled my relationship with my aunt, my father's sister, after mm -hmm. years. And that's a story, too. Uh, but she brought out a booklet, and it was from her uncle. And her uncle researched my grandmother, her mother's uh, lineage. Mm -hmm. Traced her, and I th always thought my grandmother was Polish. Mm -hmm. So, but she traced her, her uncle traced my grandmother to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. He had pictures of the actual house that still exists mm -hmm. that she grew up in in Brooklyn. And then from Brooklyn, traced her to England, and from England to Scotland. Oh, wow. It's this different, is where, it's different right. than Polish. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. A little different. Yeah. This gets good, though. <laughs> Supposedly, our, we come from the lineage of, uh, what's his name? The guy with the sword? William Wallace? William Wallace. William Wallace. Oh, the wow. Wallace Clan. Oh, wow. the, I may be related to, uh, as a descendant of the Wallace, Wallace Clan. Wow. wow. Now, that's cool. As that a Templar, is really cool. As a Templar, I told uh, the guys, yeah. this is, I'm, I, I might have to have a big, I will say, we I need a bigger a, sword. We have a big ceremonial sword I need in that, that room. If you want to try <laughs> wheel to get around and just see if you can shell yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So it's like Excalibur. If you can take it off the wall, yeah. you might be related to <laughs> William Wallace. <laughs> you are related to William Wallace. As a modern-day Templar. That Let me ask you a question. Yeah, Let me pick your brain on that. Right. So it's been, it's been stated that the modern-day Templars take no – we're not the ancient Templars. There's no direct lineage. Yeah, yeah, what are you thinking? We were talking about that this past weekend because those ancient Templars weren't the nice guys that we would want to think they are. Mm. So, you know, in a way, we want to kind of distance ourselves from the, some of the things that they did mm. uh, because 
they, like I said, they weren't such nice guys. Mm. Well, they were so, bankers. So, so we're we're. Took the bankers. None of the bankers. Yeah. None of the bankers are nice guys. Yeah. Well, uh, I would say that we're modern day Templars mm. and uh, Masonic Templars. So mm. it's a little different. And uh, I, I don't have a horse. I don't ride around chopping people's heads off. <laughs> you know. You're not defending. Them not unless they need it. You know. So. Uh, I feel like he just said, I don't ride around chopping people's heads off. I feel there's a meme somewhere in our discord. That's going to be either me or Joe or somebody <laughs> do, uh, as the headless horseman. I just got a feeling of no, it. It could happen. We have some uh, brothers from Delaware, the Schultz brothers who were actually watching okay. on, uh, and making some comments. And, yeah, speak. None that I think really? are, yeah, uh, they're, they're our extension of the podcast with, oh. uh, horsing around and making oh. funny things. Oh, okay. And, you ever see Slapshot with the Hanson brothers? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the show. That's, 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 that's these guys. <laughs> with the scars and the, the yeah. glasses? Yeah, let's put it this way. They actually, I had a uh, Apple iTunes review from somebody. I, I, again, it doesn't show names, but the thing, the Apple iTunes review said, uh, I, I was told to do this five-star review because uh, – my two was it sons the took away sons stole the remote they control. stole the remote control and told <laughs> <five>. <laughs> yeah, that's good all right so uh what we won't do for a remote <laughs> so let's uh let's get into uh templary what um how did you get introduced to templary and how did you get introduced to the grand commandery and maybe you can talk about uh the hierarchy of it once you get to that point uh how did i get into the commandery well uh, Chuck Fowler, when I was district deputy, was the line officer for the Grand Lodge mm -hmm. uh, in my district. And uh, so I worked under uh, Chuck and uh, developed a relationship with him. And he's a, a past Grand Commander. Mm -hmm. And uh, also all the guys in Washington, Washington Lodge, number 70 in, in Windsor, uh, I was their deputy. I, I developed a relationship with them. And uh, a lot of those guys are Knights Templars, too. And uh, Bill Miller is a good friend. I consider him a good friend, and he's a mentor for me. Uh, he's a past Grand High Priest of the Grand Chapter of Royal Archmasons of Connecticut and a past Grand Commander, too. And uh, so... My I, arm is quitting on I, me. I apologize. This thing is just. <laughs> I, I've developed a relationship with those guys, and uh, I'm at a loss for who brought me in. But I do remember the early years when I came in, and one of our past grand commanders was uh, is Art McKinney. Mm -hmm. He's, as far as I know, He's still still uh, uh, around. He's ninety six. Wow. Uh, I I went to visit him a while ago. I've got to go see him again. Uh, I haven't seen him in a few months, and uh, I don't feel good about that. I, I got to get to see him. Uh, but I took my order to Temple, and he was in the East. Mm. And for years, our commandery only did the order to Temple on Good Friday. Mm. And mm. so if you got your order at a temple there, it was on Good Friday. Mm. And for like 15, 20 years, it was him that was in the East. And mm. it was the past commanders that did the order of the temple. Mm. So our line officers never really did the order of the temple, uh, which was kind of a detriment to us when the inspection th theme changed. Mm. 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 And then – we were required to be inspected on the order of the temple because the right. line officers never did it. Right. So now they had to learn it. So it was a learning curve there. But uh, I'm glad I've gotten into York Rite. York Rite's added so much to masonry for me. Uh, I was uh, I joined Scottish Rite before I even got into York Rite. And you're an illustrious 33rd, right? No, no. I'm not no. a 33rd. Oh, okay. No, I'm not a 33rd. I thought you were 33rd. No. Uh, but, uh, I joined Scottish Rite first and then I came into York Rite and, uh, there's so much in York Rite. I can't even begin to tell you, uh, once you get involved, uh, you know, once you've been the head of the bodies, mm -hmm. then you've got like, uh, what's, I mean, not screw this up. 
It's okay. George fumbles over words York, all the York, time. You're fine. York, right? College? No. No, I'm a member of that. I'm the de uh, deputy. That's right. Explain the York Wright College. York Wright College is a bunch of ma uh, York Wright Masons. You're nominated. You're uh, elected to uh -huh. uh, membership. Are you a member? I am not. No. I, I think we can fix that, but, uh, and we will. Uh, but you're an eminent commander. Yeah. But do you want to? Past yeah. eminent commander. Uh, he does. Right <laughs> say yes, George. So anyway, he's the boss. I can't say no. York Wright <laughs> College is uh, it's a bunch of good York Wright Masons, and what we do is we go around and and, and we help lodges chapters, councils, and commanders. I've never seen us help a chapter, council, or commander since I've been a member, but we have done Master Mason degrees. Uh, I was just going to I was just going to say that. We've gone to different lodges and we've done the second half. Yeah, they've actually done one in my lodge probably 4 or 5 years ago, I want to yeah. say it was. Which Ken, I had a book. Which lodge is that? Ashler oh, no, Ashley Easton. I don't think I went to that one. I know George Gray Tech. I think he would might have been the master for that one. Okay. Uh, but, uh, and, and we've had some fun with that. Uh, uh, I don't know if anyone knows Chuck and Charlie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Char uh, Chuck McCollum. Chuck McCollum and oh, Charlie yeah. O'Neill. Yeah. We call them the Chuck and Charlie show. Yeah, <laughs> and they, if you're with those guys, you're just rolling. <laughs> and just rolling on the floor. They are. Because they will keep you laughing. And they're two great brothers, great Sir Knights. <laughs> and uh, we have fun. And they've put me through hell a few times. I'd show up for a degree with the college, and they'd say, "Hey, Mike," he says, oh, "We're missing, uh, we're missing a senior warden." He says, "Can you study that part?" And I'd get my blue book out and I would start studying the part. And then somebody would walk through the door and he'd go, "Oh, that's a senior warden." Hey, Mike, we don't need that now. Mm -hmm. We need this. And I'd pull out my book, <laughs> and they'd do that to me, and they were just messing with me. And then at the end, of, at, and then after, did you have a part at all? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. But after I. Got they put me through like four different parts, and I go yep. right back to the one I had. So they would <laughs> make me go full circle. Oh, they drive me nuts. <laughs> oh, so you know, we this is it. We have fun. <laughs> we have fun. It's good, clean fun. It's Masonic fun, it's and uh, you know that's mm. why I do it. Mm. Yeah, that, that's you know pretty much when we we started this podcast. Pretty much we were doing. We wanted to have a. We wanted to show the the lighter side of Freemasonry. Yeah, oh, there not is not the conspiracies, not the well. Mm -hmm. We do intelligent stuff sometimes. Usually when Joe's not on, but uh, yeah. we do intelligent stuff. <laughs> Speaking of the lighter side, Greg Schultz adds George needs to go to Spelling College before he does the York Wright College. <laughs> Uh, oh, you're spelling over there? Uh, no, no. Every time I read a name, every time I try to pronounce a word, as a matter of fact, I got uh, annihilated the last podcast because I said spig of acacia. Spig? Just couldn't oh, okay. get the word correct. No R? No R. Forgot the R. And we did have a spelling bee. There was a episode. picture of an Oompa Loompa being arrested by a police officer, and the caption read, when you're required during the field sobriety test to stay sprig of acacia. <laughs> we got a bunch of fifth grade yeah. spelling words one day. Uh, yes. Spelling bee with George it would not go well. We ended up, uh, yes, poorly. we ended up even getting a shock collar. Oh, a oh shock that would be fun. And we, oh, we, we've done it. We've yes. done shock collar so, trivia. Can, can they make those in the Sounds headphones? like we have a contestant. Yeah. <laughs> We can, no, like we we no, I'm not going to wear it. I want to see if they make headphones with a shock <laughs> <laughs> No, but there is a collar that goes around your neck. Yeah, but, probably. And let me tell you, it hurts. Oh, it's it's it, painful. It, it, could you crank up the... Uh, it go, Yes, it goes it all the, the way top, up. Right? Yep. Well, now we had it, we had it <laughs> you about halfway, halfway up. We had it halfway and you up. you shocked him? Oh, I don't know that you. I think we patients. kept. Yeah, we I think did. we kept going in increments. We kept yeah. raising each yeah. round. Yeah. Each round. Yeah. Each round. It was, uh, we passed it around. We oh, passed it around how, for the uh, the spelling bee. It was nobody knew work. enough. Not for me, around. for the spelling bee, it was yeah, just we me. Just held, we held it and, and I don't think we so had the shot collar at that point. We no, it was spelling just humiliation that we. It was humiliation. It was just straight humiliation. And then you might have spelled a few words in in sequence that made you say. We'll do a quiz. We'll do like a bore. They used the word a bore. I said abhor or whatever, and it just yeah. They, they 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 love picking on me about that stuff. So, all right. Um, hey, Scribe. Yes. 
Which kind? Please. Uh, just and uh, before the end, one. Uh, Greg Schultz has a special toast that I'd like to yes. eat yeah. him with. Yes, I yeah, will do. Uh, yes, can I have uh, one of the uh, ginger cream ales? And uh, can you hand me that? Because my this this arm is just quitting. It's just not working anymore. It's the table. I swapped out the table. Your left or uh, your right? What? Oh, no. thanks, brother. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna dump the arm. We have, while you're doing that, we have a legitimate question from our uh, Facebook Fire page. Away. From Mike, I'm sorry, Matthew Butts. Do you have to go through Royal Arch, then Cryptic Mason to join the commanderies? In our state, yes, it's a requirement. And is that uh, subject to state jurisdiction, or is that... Uh... In this state, if you're going to be a Knight Templar, you have to do that. It's required. And you have to maintain your membership, too, once you do it. You can't just quit. Take it. Quick chapter, yeah, yeah. quick council, because you know. Because then those poor guys would have no members if everybody was trying well, to shoot for yeah. the Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm taking it out. I'm trying to take the arm all the way out because it's just not working anymore. It was yeah. Uh, the thing is, a chapter. Apologize for the. A lot of people are, are enamored with chapter. Uh, the Royal Arch is a, a great degree. And they kind of overlook the council. Council's in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, but there are some beautiful. There's some beautiful ritual in the council. Uh, I can't reveal too much of it here, but uh, at, when we sell York Wright, we we ask people questions, and and one of them is, would you like to learn the real word? Mm -hmm. You were given a substitute word at one mm -hmm. point, right? Yep. Right. Well, if, you, if, if, if you come in, you're going to learn the real word. So that's appealing. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Do we, and I don't have a petition. Mm. Then, mm. would you like to walk and talk with Hiram? Have a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. How about that? That would knock your socks yep. off. And those okay. things don't happen in commandry. Those happen in... Yeah. yeah. Now, is this guy in New York right? He is your friend. Oh, okay. So he knows. Yep. He is a Templar. Yeah. So, but but uh, you know, and and and, and, and some of not yet. And, no. and the orders, especially the temple, are, are one of the most beautiful degrees or orders that you're going to see. Oh yeah. Uh, yes. It now, was now, my absolute favorite. Is he? What, what was your name again? I'm Ken. Worshipful Brother Ken. Ken. Yeah. Ken, are you a Knight Templar? I am a Knight Templar. So. Okay. You've never seen the Malta in uh, full form, have you? Uh, no, I saw the short form yes. order of Malta. Uh, we'll be doing the full form in a couple weeks in uh, Washington. Mm. And if there's any way you can be there that night. Washington oh. Commandery or Washington, Wa D.C.? Washington, Washington Commandery. Got it. Got it. <laughs> we will be do doing All the full it. form Malta. You've never seen it. And it's something to behold. Yeah, I like uh, my two my favorite own. degrees of all of them. Have you ever seen our full form? Uh, we we've done it in New Haven. We've done full form down there. So I don't know what Washington's is. No, it's looks like I'm obligated to go to Washington now. No, no but <laughs> he is the boss. If you we've can make it, if, if you can make it, come. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you want, I can give you the date. Please, uh, please maybe don't. we shouldn't do it on air because maybe we'll have 50 people show up. Oh, but, uh, uh, <laughs> more than merrier. That, that are not entitled. <laughs> Ten bucks at so, the door. Yeah. Ten bucks. No. So don't get me in trouble. George. It's my hometown too, George. I can show you my old stopping ground. Oh, go hang sorry. around, hang around, really, Disney and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was just there today, actually. Really. I brought my son to Cabela's. I stopped by my mom's okay. house. Yeah. Where's your mom? Oh, I'm up. In East Hartford. Okay. I don't want to say the street. Yeah, no, no, that's not safe. <laughs> well, I'll tell you later. But I, I work for, that's the housing authority I worked 25 years. I oh, really? In that town. Okay. Yeah. So let's yeah. talk about the, the York Wright Charities. Okay. Uh, let's talk about, uh, does the um, does chapter council and commandery have three different charities? Yes. They do. Uh, and maybe you can uh, talk about those a little bit. Okay. Uh, in chapter. And this York, was a question from uh, Greg Schultz. Okay. Online. In Royal in the Royal Arch chapter. We have what we call RARA, and it stands for Royal Arch Research Assistance, and we and it covers different things. Uh, uh, there's something to do with auditory processing or something like that, or and then part of it's uh, autism, and there's like three or four different things that they fund research for. And I'm, I'm off the top of my head, I'm not 
sure what they all are, but believe me, they're viable, good charities. Mm -hmm. And then in council, we have the Cryptic Masons Medical Research Foundation, mm -hmm. CMMRF. And that does uh, things to do with the hearing and the processing, and they fund research for that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we give millions of dollars for this. And then the big one for Commandry, for the Knights Templar, is the Knight Templar Eye Foundation. Mm -hmm. And we give millions of dollars for research. We give grants to uh, people to, do, uh, to pay for research. Mm -hmm. And we, we just had a, a guy come and talk to us yesterday. Uh, I have it here in my notes somewhere, but uh, whatever. Okay, uh, but he, he came and talked to us, and and uh, a few years back, I was at the conference, the same conference, mm -hmm. and there were, I think it was in New Jersey that year, and this Dr. Lee, who is still on the list of people that we fund as uh, researchers. He came and spoke to us, and his presentation was awesome. He had a PowerPoint, and he showed us um, a lot of it has to do with babies. Uh -huh. And at babies, when they're premature, they give them oxygen. And when you give a baby, a, a, a premature baby, oxygen, it can do something to the uh, blood vessels. It enlarges the blood vessels in the eyes. And the baby can be uh, become blind. Oh wow! And once that baby's blind, as a as a new as a preemie, they're uh -huh. blind for the rest of their life. Jesus. So you're uh, you're giving birth to blind kids, wow. which become blind adults, and that's there's nothing worse than that. Right. Uh, so they're doing research. They've been helping doctors uh, to avoid that problem. It has to do with the level of oxygen. If they give them too much oxygen, it makes it worse. So there's been a lot done in that, and a lot of it's in uh, foreign countries. Uh, okay. One of them is, I don't want to say Armenia, but it's not. Uh, I think it might have been Armenia. 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 Mm -hmm. Armenia. I believe they had a huge problem there because they had a lot of premature babies. Uh -huh. So uh, the Knights Templar Eye Foundation is doing a lot of good things to cure eye diseases, and Dr. Lee the one I was just talking about, mm -hmm. also mentioned that he was doing some research to cure uh, cancer of the eye. Mm -hmm. And cancer. then he came out with this one, which kind of blew me away. If you were to cure cancer of the eye, it would be just a couple steps to cure cancer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. wouldn't that be something if the Knights Templar Eye Foundation, their it's money really that was going stuff, to this yeah. research led to a cure for cancer yeah. that's that would that would be unfun so, so we talked to uh, uh when we talked to uh brother bill russo yeah. uh the shriners right. and he said that uh, when you donate to the shriners yeah. the money goes directly to the hospital doesn't go for administration doesn't go for you know paying this person's paycheck it goes do you directly to the hospital, right. same uh, same situation with the I, I Templar Foundation. Well, well, they have a big fund, uh -huh. and they and it's got millions of dollars in it. And they take uh -huh. so many millions a year, and they give and they have starter grants, and they have all, the, have all uh -huh. these different grants. Right. So they've got this big cache of money, and they take money out of it, right. and it grows. And so we're constantly giving money every year for mm -hmm. all these grants and for starter grants. And and they had a picture there uh, every year. They show it of like 30 or 40 uh, students that are fresh out of uh, college that are given $1,000 to travel. Mm -hmm. It's your travel grant for right. them to travel to different places and, and, and do different things. And uh, that's a small part of what they do. But uh, they said that those little, that little bit of money that we give each of those kids mm -hmm. goes a long way to keeping them in that, uh, field mm -hmm. right. because let me tell you there's a lot of things that you can make money at and not all of it is eye research and 
Right. You know, they, they could go somewhere else and make more money, but we, we want to keep them in this field so that it can help, help constantly research. help mankind, help society, help, mm -hmm. help people with eye problems. Yeah. And so, uh, our own, our own uh, past uh, grand commander, Randy Stevens, uh -huh. uh, he, he told a story about how it helped uh, his, his wife. Wow. Uh, yeah. So the Knights Templar Eye Foundation does do uh, good things and uh, it's, Tangible. So let's switch gears a little bit. What? The Order of the Temple. Right. Uh, very Christian. Right. It's a Christian organization. Well, Knights of Templar are Christians. So. Nice Christian. Correct. It has been surmised. It's a tough question, but I'm going to ask you your opinion on it and your thoughts on it. It has been surmised and said by some people that the fact that it specifically says you have to be or defend the Christian religion or, or you have to be Christian in order to join it is unmasonic. To my knowledge, at least in the state of Connecticut anyway, it only says that if you were to defend a religion, would you prefer the Christian religion? But I wanted to get your thoughts on that about, uh, or you've, if you had anything. You know, on, on the way here, I was thinking about this. Yeah. Uh, years ago, I was asked to go to a Blue Lodge Council meeting uh -huh. in a far-reaching part of the state. Uh -huh. And I went there, and I gave my little spiel about York, right, Chapter Council Commander. Uh -huh. And I got this question fired at me from across the room, and I uh -huh. never saw it coming. It just hit me broadside. Yeah. And the question was, are Knights Templar uh, anti-Semitic? <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. That just floored me. Mm. And I, I, I wish I could feel that question now because mm. it would be the answer would be different. I thought I handled it properly at the time. Uh, what I said was, we're Christian. Uh -huh. We're not anti-Semitic. We're right. just Christian. Right. And, and at this point in, in my life, I would say the same thing. And then I would right. say, I'm, I make no apology for that. We're right. Christian. Yeah. That's it. The other, and the other thing that I wanted to, to say as well is, you know, we are Masons. Right. We only allow men into our organization. When we start picking apart the, the, if we start actually picking at the the fabric of certain things, such as like the Knights Templar, they're Christian only. Yeah. But there's no rules and regs saying that there can't be a Muslim only section mm -hmm. or a Jewish section only. You know, so this just uh, the uh, Knights Templar. Uh, a Muslim section of what? Of, of Knights, of, uh, excuse me, of, uh, of Freemasonry. Yeah, well, if there was some appendant yeah, body. Though. Like there's there an appendant body for Muslims only. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong there's with lodges that. that have the Quran on there. Often, of course. So, uh, you know, the, the only blue lodge, the, yes. in the blue right. lodge, the only requirement is you believe in right. a supreme being. Right. And uh, I know personally of a person who joined a lodge that was a Wiccan. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Uh, I, in my ignorance, when I learned this, I says, "Well, they worship the devil." Was this Blue Lodge? Yeah. Well, this is Blue Lodge. We had we had the same situation. In our this lodge. guy was a, a Wiccan, uh, but uh, I found out that they believe in a god and a goddess. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, a a male and a female version of God. Mm -hmm. So, but that's what they believe, and they supposedly believe in a supreme being. And they this guy was amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's so many different ways you can pick apart things. For instance, right. the Wiccan thing. You believe in a god and a goddess, right? But our ritual always says you have to believe in a supreme being, right. meaning you only can believe in one. Yeah, that, that, but that, that's, that's a little bit now, of a stretch. Idea. You know, yeah, you're fishing yeah. for things. Yeah. Well, because in, in Christianity, you could claim the same thing for the Trinity and right. Yeah. That type of thing. But. I, I think that there's certain, you, you know, there's certain people who are going to find fault in everything. Uh, and there's nothing. There's no way. There's no way way around it. And, and you know, in what? regards to the Wiccan thing, they're not devil worshippers. They believe in gods and goddesses. But now, you know, the other thing is, well, what about devil worshippers? In my personal opinion, is this? They, oh, well, it's a religion. Okay, but to me, and this is just my personal opinion. Uh, again, we don't speak for any grand lodge, grand jurisdiction, grand commandery. I made that a thousand times clear. But my personal opinion is this: the Church of Lucifer, if you read their tenets, talk about, well, if somebody hurts you, you hurt them back. That is exactly yeah, the opposite of what Freemasonry yeah, teaches. It's the, it's the, well, on that basic well, really, level. Really, the Bible does say an eye for an eye. 
Mm. But, I don't really go based on the Old Testament. Yeah, but, uh, that's Old Testament. <laughs> the angry God but, stuff in Freemasonry. You know, we're more like New Testament. We're more of a, you know, of thy neighbor kind of. But if we're going to quote Bible, Bible, you want to take it. We, you know. We're going to quote Bible. There's, there's oh, the right. Old Testament. New Testament. Stuff so the you can quote Testament, the Bible. Absolutely. But you know, just what I was talking about with the, you know, the the Church of Lucifer. It's they, their yeah, their whole familiar. premise is darkness, is mm -hmm. evil. We are the exact polar opposite of that. Right. So how do you conform the two? You can't. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. So well, let's not encourage this. No, no, no. I'm not encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and keep in mind that yes, it's a requirement to have a belief in a supreme being, mm -hmm. but your obligation doesn't stop there. That's just first and foremost. Yeah, number right. one, need to believe in a supreme being, and then there's other landmarks and tenets that you need to be on board with that are just not compatible mm -hmm. with. Well, even the point that I had made about, you know, our ritual says, you know, that you will prefer the Christian religion. It doesn't say that you have to be Christian. It just says if you were to well, defend a religion, would you prefer to be it? Realistically. We, we have had some mm -hmm. Jews become Knights Templars. Correct. So it, it, it's not unheard of. It's right. rare because mm -hmm. most of them, uh, shy away. They're, they're not Christian, so they, right. they don't feel that that's appropriate for them not mm -hmm. to be a member right. and that's your choice right uh but uh and i had said that all the lessons in freemasonry i mean you look at the scottish right they have they have the, the whole middle the 17th and 18th degree oh yeah that's straight christian yeah but the lessons regardless if you're christian or not are still the same yeah so yeah, i i don't see uh an issue with any of it i just wanted to bring that up and get your opinion on it because yeah. i seen that and i'm like <laughs> yeah. Now, now, when I was hit with that question years ago, that, that floored me because I yeah, never saw it coming. Of... You know, uh, we're not anti anybody, really. Right. No. You know, not we're at all. Not. Masonic no. it, uh, in, in 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 Scottish right, they teach, and and we teach it tolerance. Uh -huh. Tolerance. Uh -huh. Absolutely. That's a key part of Masonry is tolerance. Uh, we respect other people, so. Uh -huh. You know, we're not anti anybody. Correct. Philip Butts has a question for you, sir. Philip. He's actually asking, how long does it take for one to join York Rite in order to become a Templar? So from the hmm. beginning to the end. Well, it depends on which bodies you join. Mm -hmm. uh, it varies by jurisdiction too. No, no. There's there's some groups in Connecticut that uh, they put two guys on a two year plan uh, because they have education between each of the parts. Mm -hmm. So uh, it could take you. And, it's not like Scottish Rite. Mm -hmm. Scottish Rite, you're, you know, they have a class in the fall and a class in the spring. You sit there and you watch uh, uh, videos three, four times, and boom, you're a Scottish Rite Mason. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, that wouldn't happen with York Rite. York Rite, you don't sit and watch the degrees. You are an actual participant. Yeah, just like Blue Lodgers. So, mm -hmm. so yes. Same. So it takes a little longer. We don't have the proficiency like a Blue Lodge. Right. And neither does Scottish Rite, but uh, there's a lot to learn in York Rite. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're thinking of whoever's out there, Mr. Butts, mm -hmm. or is he a brother? Uh, he is he a is. Blue yeah, Lodge If you're thinking about thinking York about Rite, him. don't think about it. Sign a petition. I'm telling yeah, you. Because he said, I'm currently still just doing Blue Lodge, but debating on York or, uh, or to the uh, – debating on York to the goal of Templar or going for Scottish Rite. Yeah. I, I would knock either one because I'm both. Right. But uh, York Wright has a lot to offer. Yeah. And, and they both they offer different things. So my yeah. advice to, to Brother Phil is don't look at the one that's going to get you there the fastest. No. Right. Look no. into it and, and see which one's right for you and uh -huh. what's best for you because they both offer similar things but also very different things. Well, I'm, I'm like, are you in both rights? No, I'm just Scottish. Okay. When you when I like the I red said, hair, I started out. Yeah. I started His out grandmother's Scottish. Scottish. Cut him uh, some slack. I, I started in the Scottish right, mm -hmm, me too. and then when I joined York right, there some of the degrees are so similar. Yeah, they're almost exact. And and, 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 and the language you hear uh, from one to the other, you know what though? Mm -hmm. That language is derived from the Bible. Mm -hmm. There's only mm -hmm. one Bible, and the yeah. same lessons transcend from right. either side of it. Yes. The one thing I liked, me personally, about the York Rite more so than the Scottish Rite, and I, you know, said it before, that uh, I like it the same format, and it's a continuation of Blue Lodge. And realistically, the chapter or Royal Archmasons, well, was actually 
even uh, part of the master mason degree. part of part yeah of it, you, the, mason. the master mason degree wasn't the know all end all you had to, again perfect example up here we had uh, morning star lodge and then we had evening star lodge our chapter up here of royal arch masons yeah. so after you did the master mason degree the york or the the chapter was the next level to go to get the rest of the story yes of of what happened afterward now we were just talking in uh Albany this past weekend there was a, a bunch of guys that want to get together and have like a festival uh, every year we have a what we call a tri-state festival mm -hmm. uh, that's something you'd want to go to because we do the super excellent master degree oh I've uh, seen that I've you seen have super excellent yep you yep. saw yep. us do it uh, no it was St. Elmo's uh, no 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 that's short oh. no, no, <laughs> this is full All this right. is full it's costumes and I hate to keep mentioning the names, but Randy Stevens uh -huh. is Nebuchadnezzar, and he is an awesome Nebuchadnezzar. Mm. He, you, you just hate to love him and love to hate him. He is awesome <laughs> in that uh, part, and he does a great job. And people, once they see him do that, they, they say the same thing. I just want to say while you're talking about sure. this, yeah. when you get to any degree and you get a chance to play a part right. in a degree – own the part oh yeah like act it because it makes the degree so much you're, better you're trying to impress for the, the person that you're portraying it yeah. to i have a fruit fly that's just driving yeah, me that's okay. um so if you see hands flying that's what it is i'm attacking this fruit fly with hands. but uh back i thought you were impersonating dan the italian yeah that's talking it. with your hands talking with his hands um so, yeah but that's i've always if you're gonna own a part there's nothing worse than a monologue it's it's just you bore people to tears. Own the part. Uh, you have another question. Does the York Rite have a one day class like some blue lodges or grand jurisdictions that have a one day three degree class? Like a degree festival. Like a degree festival. I heard some people talking in the Northeast Conference this weekend that said that they had uh, some festivals for uh, commandry. You couldn't do. Mm. Royal Arch, Council, and Commandry in one day. Yeah. And if you did, it would be such a butcher job. It yep. wouldn't be worth doing. There was somebody so, who uh, said that that was actually done all in one day, and I can't no, remember. No, I don't who think Royal was Arch. There. Was it Royal Arch? No. Uh, I can't remember who it was. Somebody was saying something about we how did a one day it. class, I remember, in New Haven when I think Chip Stan. I did the, I did the chapter. Oh, no, the chapter. I did the council. No, no. This was uh, Blue Lodge. Oh, Blue Lodge. Uh, oh, back oh, oh. in. 2004, when I was deputy, I think it was. I've never Kip been Stan a fan of that. was Grand Master, and we did a one-day class in New Haven Temple, and we raised like 50 or 70 guys that day. Wow. And we used the uh, backboards for the ambulances, mm -hmm. backboards. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's the last time I remember. I've never been a fan that. of a class. No. I've never uh, been a fan of a class. Well, I think it takes away from personal experience. You lose so many of those guys that take those uh, one day yeah. classes. Mm -hmm. uh, th they come in, they take the class, and then it's our fault because we lose contact with them, and they they just fall drift away. Well, and for them, it's more of a check the box. Hey, I want the title of yeah. uh, uh, Knight uh, Templar, right. yeah, the, the title of Master Mason, or whatever it may yeah. be. Deuce cars recipients. That's very basically yeah. what they are. That's not seems good. like a waste. Joseph Schultz, Worshipful Brother Joseph Schultz, asks, what kind of social events do you do? What kind of social events does Templar do? Uh, Knights Templar, we're, we do a lot of religious stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Good Friday, we do... Uh, order we, the Temple. We do Order the Temples. Uh, we got three or four commanderies throughout the state that on Good Friday uh, do the Order of the Temple. New Haven's one of them. Uh, we do... Easter sunrise service down mm -hmm. there in the Coleman Hospital. Mm -hmm. And the, tent, the the residents down there love us. They love to see us come in with our feathered hats oh, and yeah. our shakos uh -huh. and our uniforms. And of course, there's no swords in church. Right. So we don't. Mm -hmm. And we, we've stopped recently wearing the chapeaus because basically, you know, you, you, you go in with it on your shoulder and you put it under the chair and the guy behind you kicks it. And, Mm. We spend a lot of money for our chef posts. They're big. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we do that. Uh, was he asking about religious stuff or? Just social oh, events, things in general. Social stuff. 
we do uh, we we appear on Grand Masters Day. We lead the parade. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very proud this year as Grand Commander to have 21 Sir Knights in full uniform uh, march in the Grand Masters Day parade, mm -hmm. and we presented the flag at the tent for the Grand Master. And we do Christmas. And That's we, we do a lot of Christmas observances in all the commanderies. Uh, some of the commanderies uh, share it between two commanderies. They'll have one, uh, the two commanderies mm -hmm. come together and do one Christmas observance. Uh, we do that. Uh, we we have some ladies things. Uh, uh, there's receptions for me, like Hamilton had a reception for me, mm -hmm. and they had a dinner, and they had a cake, and, and all the ladies were there, and they had uh, – they had entertainment. They had, you know, and, and so we they make it a, a family event, and then we had another reception for me down in uh, Nor Nor Norwalk. Uh, Trinity Commandery did one this year for me, and they uh, Stu Drost uh, mm -hmm. created a whole. Uh, were you there for that, George? They had the, and I'm going to say it wrong again. Stu just I just mentioned it uh, yesterday when I was talking about my year. It was the Countess of the Ro uh, the Contessa of the Rose Blanc. This was, was at a, Grand Commander, right? No, no, this was in Norwalk. Norwalk, no, yeah. I, I don't and, think I did. And the... Uh, so the ladies, the ladies were like the candidates, and they did all these things to the ladies, and they took their purses and they took their shoes, yeah, and they put them in a, a box, and then they poured what they thought was water on them. Oh, wow. And the women were freaking out. And uh, we had fun that night. That was a great night. And uh, and then we had a meal. And uh, so, it, you know, Masons like to eat too. So. Yes. Uh, another thing yeah. that we like to do, uh, I had a picnic for uh, the officers, the past grands down at the Ashler uh, Pavilion uh, in August. Mm -hmm. uh, we do stuff like that. Uh, my commandery, Washington, every, uh, in the in the in June, all the York Wright bodies uh, in East Hartford. We're the only York Wright bodies in the state that own our own building. Mm -hmm. We own that building, and in June we had it put in the chapter, council, and commandery bylaws that we can eliminate the meetings in June by a prior vote. So in May, we vote in chapter, council, and commandery to not have any meetings in June because the building's too hot. We don't yeah. have air conditioning. Yeah. But the first Tuesday of every June, and this is something you and your wife should come to, is our picnic on the porch. And everybody brings dishes in. We have set up a big grill. We have hamburgers and hot dogs. And everybody comes down, and it's a great event, and uh, it's socialize and the family comes the kids are there the wives are there it's a great event well i can tell you you definitely have some interest uh people interested in the york right because yeah. you got questions firing in left oh, and well, right look, keep them coming. Uh, so joseph schultz the uniforms are similar to the knights of columbus will they change it to something more unique or different uh it depends on what part of the country you're in uh down south uh, where it's hotter they have the summer uniform uh, up north in Maine, they have these long coats that are wool. Uh, so, you know, there are differences in them. Some of the commanderies uh, mm -hmm. are going to a cap and mantle because mm -hmm. they can't afford the uniforms and the chapeaus. Uh, so there are differences around the country, around the state, and even around the world. Now, maybe you can elaborate on this because I thought this was cool as hell, and I wanted to do this in New Haven, but... Uh... Uh, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, one commandery, and I don't know the state, actually does it in ancient Templar uniforms. Yes. Can you please elaborate on that? I don't know which commandery it is. That sounds cool. I or think, that's right. I they think. do it in chain mail, the whole, the, the uh, mantle. It might be New York. It might, there might be one in New York. Uh, we were, uh, I thought it was in like Indiana or Illinois or Iowa. It was there somewhere. probably is some out there too. Mm. Indiana is a huge state. I, I just went out there uh, last summer for, for the uh, – Grand Encampment's Triennial mm -hmm. uh, flew out there, and that was a great week uh, for the Triennial. Every three years, the Grand Encampment has a meeting, and all the heads of the states have to be there. It's required. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when we voted on the, uh, the change to the law mm -hmm. where we can have five to open 
Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we, we you still need nine to open. Right. But uh, and that's a difference in York right too. Right. Is in, in Blue Lodge you can open a lodge with, with three. Well, right. unless you're doping. Right, right, right. Oh so, yeah. So yeah. we're yeah. So but uh, you know in, in York right. Uh, it's a requirement that you have to have at least nine, but we, we made an alteration to that in, 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 in Commandry, and I thought it was just our little problem. Uh -huh. And when I got out to Indiana, uh, Indianapolis, we were hearing from guys in the Midwest, and uh, it's a problem all over, where some Commandries, they don't get nine of mm -hmm. their own, uh -huh. so they can't open. So they they saw it as a positive to go to this change. So now we voted in Connecticut to change it so that we have to have five of our own and then we could have four from another commandery. So we have to have nine, but it doesn't have to all be from our commandery because there's commanderies in the Midwest where guys are traveling two and three hours to get to commandery. Yep, right. They're going two and 300 miles to get to a meeting and to get there and not have it happen. Right, right. That's... That should turn yeah. off for sure. Yeah. So let me ask you a uh, major question, Freemasonry round, uh, and then we'll we'll start to wrap this up. But uh, Freemasonry has taken a major dip in membership. Right. Your, the York Rite and Knights Templar have also taken and felt that brunt. In your opinion, how do we bring it back? It, it's What's uh, it going to take? I was t listening to a webinar on the Grand Encampment website today. Uh, have you ever gone to the Grand Encampment website? You want to plug it? Uh, you I'm going to plug it. I don't think so. Go to the Grand Encampment <laughs> website. They've got new stuff there, a membership. Uh, they have a toolbox, and there's PowerPoint presentations there you can download and use. And what's this website? This is the w Grand Encampment www.knightstemplar.org. Uh, uh, the Grand Encampment of the United States. Joe, maybe you can look that on up. Uh, Knightstemplar.org. Uh, all right, there's all different. Or that. Be careful what you're clicking on. But, uh, click on that. <laughs> oh, trust me. We know all about this. The Grand when, you, when you click on, on the right one. This one here. Uh, we bring no. up an Alex no. Jones website. No, and... that's <laughs> no, that's not it. That might be New York. Said USA. That's no, it has the it has uh, the Grand Master of Knights Templars picture on it, Jeffrey Nelson. So when you get on the right one, I'll see it and I'll know. And and just to the right of his face is a link for membership. Mm -hmm. But I was watching a webinar there, and uh, what were we talking about? I was asking how about how to bring. Freemasonry there you back. Go. That's the one. There you go. Yeah, so it's Knights, Knights Templar.org. .org. Awesome. And they've got all this new stuff because this is the big push this year is membership. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we had a guy in, in New York, uh, Albany, yesterday that was doing this for the shrine. The shrine is seeing a peak in membership right mm. now. Oh, this is good. And, oh, there's awesome stuff in there, I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> and, and you can go in there and spend hours listening to things and watching things. Ken, throw and, that plug in there one more time. Okay, so that is www.knightstemplar.org. And there is a link to join membership, correct? No, no, there's no, a it's membership. The it's the membership uh, button. It's, oh, there's it's this to thing called increase membership. Okay. It's to, a toolbox to help you increase membership and what to do. Okay. Uh, so the problem with the membership mm -hmm. It's not anything that's our problem. Right. It's the Lions' problem, the Knights of Columbus' problem. Mm -hmm. It's the church's problem. My own church right. is probably going to close because people are not be the millennials. A lot of them aren't being involved with things. They they don't want to join nothing. Right. They, they, you know, they they, they they're. It, it, it's a societal change that's causing all this. Right. And. In, in that webinar that I was watching today, he said, well, in the 40s and 50s, we had a peak in masonry. Masonry was booming. Right. He says, don't expect that to be again. We can't right. expect that again. Right. But we can improve where we are now. Of course. We, you know, we can improve our numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, York Wright, uh, like 10% of the masons in Connecticut are York Wright masons. Mm -hmm. So right there. Right. We have room that 
you know, we can bring more guys in of course, from, just of out of the pool that we're fishing in. Mm. But we also want to increase increase that base too. We right. need to help our blue lodges, and that's something. Even me, I'm guilty of it. I don't go to my blue lodge enough. Right. We 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 need need to maintain our blue lodge uh, commitment mm -hmm. and our relationship with blue lodge and support the blue lodge right. and, and bring in members to masonry. Period. Not just Templary or Scottish Rite right. or Shrine mm -hmm. into masonry. Right. I think for me, one of the things that hurts Freemasonry in this current day and age is I feel that technology and society has moved to a very electronic means. Yeah. And I feel like Masonry didn't really follow with it. So now we're kind of playing catch up to it. Yeah. So, and I think that that is one thing, but you're also right though. I mean, how do you get young new guys interested in a craft that does things different? You know, we don't play with our phones and watch. We're not on social media. You know, we, you know, I don't think just, George Washington would approve of that in his book of etiquette. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't think he would approve of that. Yeah. I like going to a place once a month where you can talk with other people and not have to right. worry about your phone. You, you know what? I think society in general, society in general has gotten to a place where, I mean, how, you'd see it, you get on the bus or the subway right. or the right. train and every. Yeah, nobody talks to anybody. Nobody anymore. talks to anybody. My, my lady, Linda, and still I. still do. We, 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 we <laughs> hadn't been to. Uh, That's right. What's that chicken place? Chick-fil-A. Chick Chick we had never been to Chick-fil-A. So uh, last Monday was the uh, Labor Day. And every time we think of it, it's a Sunday, and Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday. Yep. So mm -hmm. we said, let's go to Chick-fil-A. It was packed. So we're sitting there eating our Chick-fil-A, whatever it was, and there's a table behind us. And it was a mom and a dad with a, a, a little boy and a little girl. And the little boy and the little girl are like all over the parents, mm. try, vying for their attention. And the mother's got her laptop in front of her, and she's in her laptop. No, dude, that's messed up. And her, the father's on his phone, and he's on his phone, and they're totally ignoring their children. Yeah, that's I'm a like, problem. And, and I says, Linda, look at this. And, and, you know, that to me is a problem in our society. Absolutely. And, and uh, I, I saw this one, like two years ago, I was in Darien at a, at a meeting down there, uh, it probably was a commander meeting, and uh, they had a group that was renting the building mm -hmm. after our meeting, which was pretty late. Right. And I thought that was weird yeah. on, a, on, a, on a weeknight, and I think it was a bunch of college kids. So we had to get out of the building. So I I take my my stuff, I get out to the back into the parking lot in the dark, and I'm putting my chapeau case and stuff in the car. And I hang my jacket up in there, and I turn around, and there's this nine or ten passenger van sitting there. And these were the people that were going to go in the building when we vacated. And there was like ten college kids in there, and it was pitch black. And all you saw was ten screens, <laughs> ten of them. And nobody talks. No. Nobody does what we're doing right now. No one communicates. They're in their phone, and you know what? I think that's a problem. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's been even said that, you know, electronics in themselves are actually causing uh, a form of addiction. Yes. Yeah. And I think, like, what happens if tomorrow the lights go out? Every electronic. Boom. Panic. I mean, there is a weapon that absolutely. is, that is, that is yeah. made. Yeah, it's, it's an EMP. Magnetic pulse. Yeah. It's an EMP weapon that is I, I, don't, I think the Russians were talking about developing it. The United States, I'm sure, has it somewhere. And by the way, don't go to Area 51. Just want to throw that out there. You're probably <laughs> yeah. going to get shot. But I don't know if you've heard about this. 135, where's that? You don't want to know. <laughs> anyway, you know uh, what? If there is such a weapon, I think we should turn it on ourselves. Oh, high altitude it would, nuke would. It would wipe out would uh, you know all what? electronics, oh, including banking and all that stuff. What do you think stuff, that would do so. to Well, look at, what is it, maybe... Uh, <laughs> We got people beating our doors. <laughs> well, maybe 15 years ago yeah, or so, like talk. the Eastern Grid went yeah. down. Yeah. For a day or two. Oh, yes, and, I and do remember that. In New York, people were losing their crap. Yeah. Remember that? Well, that was 10, yeah, I think it was like 10, 15 years ago. It had to be ago. 10, 15 years ago. Like I, was I said, if we turn that weapon on ourselves, Mason, we would boom. Yeah. But, uh, my lodge. My blue lodge meets on Monday night. Society would crumble, but masonry, man. Wow. <laughs> but you know, people, well, that's part of the master plan. People that's how would we freak take out. Over. People that's would how freak we out over. not having information Absolutely. at the second in their hand. Yeah. And, and, and most of us out. would too. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, I love to Google stuff. You know, because you know, 
But that's another problem. Who goes to the library? Nobody. We Google it. You yeah, know? it's right on your phone. And how do you know that Google answer is right? And actually, worshipful brother Joseph said uh, phones are causing a lack of social skills. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Oh, without a doubt. Absolutely. That's the whole point. My daughter's even, 18. She will not call someplace. She'd rather drive to Target and see if they have it versus call the store. That's a waste of gas. Oh, come uh, on. That I'm paying for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's like, can't you just pick up the phone and see if they have it? Nah, I'd rather just take the drive. It's easier. I'm like, how is that easier? Who's this? My daughter. Oh. She's 18. Is she trying to get away from you? That's a possibility. <laughs> Maybe that she went Strong, to the college in Ohio, Strong, so that's possible. Strong possibility. <laughs> strong possibility. I'm trying to get into it. You know what? You know what? Eighteen. Uh, is she still? Does she talk to you? Um, not as much anymore because she just we just dropped her off at college. She's uh, eight hours away in Ohio. But she does so. talk to you. She does she talk versus when she needs money. And uh, Dad, can I get this from Amazon? Yeah, I, I noticed when my son became like thirteen or so. Uh, you know, they're very close to you, and then they become like a teenager, and then drop me off here, Dad, and yeah. I'll walk around the corner. They uh -huh. don't want to be seen with you. Right. So She's uh, starting to come back a little bit when she has a problem. She knows I'm the problem solver. You got a little bird. one? I got, yeah. No, you know, I do. A five-year-old and oh, uh, almost breaks your heart. Old, so, yeah. It breaks your heart when a eight-year-old is getting close to that. You know what I love doing is when you drop your kids that. off with their friends, or you, go to pick, or you go to pick them up, and I'm just like... Hi! Hi! Dude, you look at all. I don't, I don't know who you are. In your Brady jersey. <laughs> Dude, I'm on the phone with my daughter. The, on the phone with my daughter the other night. What's wrong with Brady? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Depends on who you ask. We're all, we're all, fans. we're all Patriot fans except for him. Who's, who's that guy in the corner with no microphone? I don't know. Aren't you? Aren't you? Can you have him go scribe something? Go scribe something. Scribe, go scribe something. The Browns? I'm going to throw Hell something. No. Can I throw something? Can I throw something? Can I throw something? Can I throw something? Can I throw the soundboard at him. It's fine. All right. We'll see. All right. What do you say we wrap this up, fellas? All right. Did we answer all the questions? No. Nah, pretty much it. They're talking about goat riding and I beer drinking. What? <laughs> all the good questions. No. Uh, oh, we got that. We've got the toast. Toast. Yes. We have to toast uh, Brother Greg Schultz. Uh, well, Ken. It's Brother Greg Schultz's toast. For his birthday. This is his birthday. But we're also toasting for his birthday. So, yes. same time, same thing. Happy Hello. birthday, worshipful brother Greg Schultz. He's from uh, Delaware. Happy birthday. And uh, actually, we've had Greg, right? Greg, Greg Schultz. Yep. This shirt was actually uh, not from Greg Schultz. Not from not Greg, Greg Schultz, Schultz. But this shirt was given to us by a Gideon Bookelman who came all the way from Amsterdam to come meet us. Oh. And he recorded a podcast with us. I think you us. guys should travel to Amsterdam. I think we should have a room. Maybe not. Dangerous. Maybe not. I'll stay behind. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I, uh, no. Can I have a little bit? No. no. Oh, I didn't know where it was, huh? Um, yeah, no. Me going to Amsterdam, dangerous territory. Yeah, I don't think uh, any. Three shots are usually my limit. If you've ever seen Euro Trip. Which Ken still probably I'm hasn't. No, I'm still. We go to New still, Amsterdam, or rather New York. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop thing. at like what is it called, Red Box? That's a sore subject with me, New <laughs> Amsterdam. I was at the bar last night, and and, and, and I, I says, you, "What do you got for vodka?" New Amsterdam, really? <laughs> okay, so I get a shot. So uh, I, I, I get a I get a glass of New Amsterdam. You would think it would be cheap, right? Yeah, Nine bucks. Wow. Oh, no, New New I could buy a whole off, right? bottle of New oh, Amps, wow. Amsterdam vodka yeah. for nine bucks. Oh, I'm a pop off kind of, kind of guy. These hotels are just. Like, can't be beef eater on the bottom shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Pop off. Yeah, pop off. Oh, some Stoli. <laughs> Anything with a Polish eagle on it. Give me that. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I want some tequila. Just give me. Okay. The, uh, no, she don't give me the Jose. I, I, I want the Gomez on the bottom there. <laughs> All right, so this is for Greg Schultz. His, Please, he okay. says, for his birthday gift, at the end of the podcast, he wanted to do a toast. So this toast, brethren, is to all brothers, men and women, serving in our armed forces at home and in harm's way. May God bless them and their families and keep them safe. Brethren, right hand to arms. To arms. Ready. 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 Aim. 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 Fire. Aim. Good fire. Fire all. Together, brothers. Vivat, vivat, vivat.
Happy birthday, Last two things. Happy birthday, Greg. Happy birthday. Uh, he also Happy said... Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, <laughs> that on Patreon for uh, <laughs> so uh brother Greg Schultz uh happy birthday he says uh, I'm a size medium size medium yes come they make there. fun of me small medium medium toast. we're not giving medium, you free medium. come on and uh he also said all the Schultz brothers are from Delaware yeah right, Joseph Schultz said all the brothers yes they're all from Delaware and uh, I think they're all past Masters? Are they allowed in surrounding states? Did, That's the question. I, yeah. I believe right. this guy's from uh, it's either Delaware or Maryland. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, anyway, wow, uh, <laughs> it's like New Zealand and Australia. I, I know one know thing: Delaware, when they come up here to play UConn, they kick their. Mm. You know, Delaware has a good football team, but uh, yeah. there's a brother from down there. His name is Irwin, Mark Irwin, and mm. uh, lat not. Last year, when we went to the to the conference in up in uh, Albany mm. for the Northeast Department, he was in charge of the conference. So my girlfriend Linda and I went. So I filled out the form for the reservation, and I put my full name, and I put her full name, uh, and my lady. And so I get up there, and they have he handed out name badges. So he gives me mine, and hers was Mrs. So. <laughs> He married us, so I've been busting his chops ever since. <laughs> I, and I, I, I Is he legally able to do that. Yeah. Well, All right. Last question. We're gonna wrap it up. Last question. We're gonna wrap it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This this is like fire. This this is probably I think the most comments and questions and than we've had ever. I think. Uh, last question. You watch football? Yep. What team? Patriots. Yeah. Right, here we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I you can come back. Brady is the GOAT. Yes, no yes he is. You're allowed that. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody in a free world that can't say that. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a Pittsburgh fan, you have to admit it. I mean, red, white, and blue. Yes. All right. It's on American and not like American Patriots. Too. <laughs> All right. Uh, last thing, I want to thank you very much. Thank right, you I'm for inviting great. me. Absolutely. I've had I, a blast. Thank you for coming up. It's been fun. Thank you very much. I was, uh, I'm not going to lie, for a little while, I, I treaded lightly on who would want to join because again we got in a little bit of trouble. Who'd want to be interested? But I'm super, super happy you came well, I'm up glad here. I, I'm glad I didn't listen to the naysayers. Yeah, we thank are, you. We appreciate. We, that. we appreciate we really it. Do. We really do. We're normal so. standard. Brothers. And to the normal extent you can go back and, and share your experience, we'd I, appreciate that. I, yeah, you, you guys might be standard, but I don't know about normal. <laughs> <laughs> None of us are normal. All right. Let's wrap it up. So, uh, for the Freemasons podcast, I am your host, Wright Warshall Brother George Marjorie, signing off. Warshall Brother Joe, signing off. Warshall Brother Ken, signing off. Uh, right, I'm in a Grand Commander, Mike Seaman. Thank you. All right, and have a good night, everyone. Good night, good night everybody. Good night. All right, we're still live. We're still live on Facebook. I've shut for down now. the audio. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Right. Say good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. <laughs> you, you guys probably aren't old enough to remember that, are you? No.